again, a regeneration of the I factor fiction. And my interest began uh, when I read the book, The Body Electric. This is written by Dr. Robert Becker, an orthopedic surgeon who passed away about five or six years ago. Brilliant, brilliant orthopedic surgeon who um, really looked at different ways for the body to heal. And one of the problems in orthopedic surgery is getting the bones to heal. Those of you that may have had a broken hip or know somebody had a broken hip, that can be devastating because the bones just doesn't heal. So Dr. Becker looked at methods of getting bone to heal and also tissues to heal. One thing that really impressed me was when a salamander has an amputation of the forearm, I'm talking about a complete amputation, um, it'll regenerate. Un unbelievable, if you cut the tail off of a salamander or a lizard, it'll regenerate. So there are a lot of animal species that have complete regeneration. So why is that? I mean, our bodies are supposed to be very sophisticated and remarkable. So why is it that any part of our body can't regenerate? So what Dr. Becker observed is you need an electrical stimulus. You need an electrical field for regeneration to take place. If you block that electrical field, regeneration will not take place. So he studied, he studied the whole idea of uh, regeneration. He looked at it, histology and uh, the changes in tissue and certain changes take place in the epidermis and then there's a blastema that develops in limbs and things like that. So this is widely studied, but if you stop the current electrical field at any point, regeneration will stop. So we need a healthy electrical current in our body. You know, our body is the body electric. It's very dynamic. We need that current. Of course, as we get older, the current uh, decreases. And I'm sure you've heard over and over again, you need to have an alkaline pH. An alkaline pH is healthy. And an alkaline pH means you have a lot of electrons in your body. And of course, there's many ways to get electrons into your body. Eating good, healthy, organic food, you're putting electrons in. Positive thoughts, affirmations, you're putting electrons in. And of course, microcurrent, we're putting electrons in. So this is remarkable here. This is a, a 20 or one year old male that had a total amputation of his finger. And uh, by using uh, electrical fields and current, total regeneration of the finger, uh, you know, phenomenal. And I really believe that we can do this with any part of the body, with any part of the body. But it may take more than just the current. You have to have good nutrition, proper hydration, detoxification, all these things that may inhibit regeneration. This is an x-ray of my son, Sean, who broke his wrist. And the pisiform bone is a small bone that just doesn't heal. And the doctors were not optimistic that it would heal on its own. They still put a cast on. And I had my son, Sean, use microcurrent. I says, we're gonna get this thing healed with microcurrent. When they took the cast off, the surgeons were shocked that the bone was completely healed. Um, and this is due, I believe, to mm -hmm. microcurrent. And uh, of course, my wife and I were praying for Sean, too, so I always put a tincture of prayer in. I think prayer sometimes is more powerful than microcurrent. But anyway, this was a big um, uh, revelation for me, seeing microcurrent work on uh, this broken bone in my son's hand. Now, in addition to current, we are using something called frequency. And each tissue has a unique frequency, and we're trying to match that um, frequency of the microcurrent or electricity to the tissue, then there's a harmony. Much like you have two tuning forks. If they're both a C sharp, they're gonna resonate with each other. So the retina has a certain frequency, and we want to match the frequency of the retina with the frequency of the microcurrent. You have harmony and you'll have regeneration. So that's one of the things that we've worked on. Uh, many doctors over the last uh, 20 or 30 years 
coming up with different frequencies that are maybe more specific for the tissue. So uh, we've talked about homeopathy, and in homeopathy, we have um, unique remedies that have a certain frequency to help you. And likewise with microcurrent, uh, we have um, uh, unique frequencies to try to match the tissue. Now, if anybody out there is a hey, I'm radio operator, I'm a general operator, that's my call sign, KM4JQR. And becoming a ham radio operator has actually helped me with um, understanding microcurrent. Because microcurrent, we send a frequency. I propagate a frequency. The other day, I was in Florida, and I propagated a frequency, and I was talking to a friend of mine in Pittsburgh. So we propagate a frequency, and then another, there's a carrier wave, which is my voice. So likewise, what we do in your eye, or you have a, a condition, we have a frequency that kind of matches that tissue, and then we send another carrier frequency, which will then match or tell the tissue what to do. Uh, let's say there's inflammation. We want it to reduce inflammation. Mm -hmm or maybe their scar tissue, reduce scar tissue. Now, the exciting thing that's happening now is something called signals, and I'm working with a company called iCell, and they've actually isolated some signals in the body. One is called VEGF, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. And this is a signal that stimulates new blood vessels. Now, of course, VEGF has gotten a bad rap because those of you that have wet macular degeneration, you're given anti-VEGF. You're given medications which block the growth of new blood vessels. But in actuality, uh, we need new blood vessels to stimulate regeneration and growth. SDF1, stem cell derivative factor, is another signal that was uh, discovered. And this signal actually stimulates stem cells in your body. So one way for regeneration is to have healthy stem cells. And I think stem cells have gotten a lot of hype. Everybody thinks, oh, I can get stem cells and that'll regenerate my eye, it'll regenerate anything. But your body has stem cells. It's just getting the stem cells in your body to work. So the stem cell derivative factor frequency does that. Clothro is another one. It's a signal to stimulate an anti-aging protein. Uh, and so this is something that is uh, being utilized with microcurrent. So it's exciting because we're using these signals to try to regenerate the body. Now, light. Those of you that are involved with the program, we're using light. Light, light and microcurrent kind of go hand in hand. Light is essential for all light. If it wasn't for the sun would there be no light on Earth? Uh, you know, the sunlight is transformed into using photosynthesis to the plants uh, store energy, and you eat those plants, and uh, you uh, eat the energy. Essentially, you're eating electrons. You're eating electrons. This is an article, Photobiomodulation, Regeneration Without Risk. This is Excuse me, uh, Dr. Sandra? Yes. Excuse me, um, if we all muted our, our uh, microphones, you wouldn't get this. There's lots of feedback or something. Happening. Yeah, somebody, uh, somebody has their microphone on. Uh, please, yeah, mute, mute your microphone. Or if you have your phone, uh, you know, put something over the receiver. Because that's the problem. You get a lot of people and their microphones are on. I had one guy one time was cutting the grass and he was listening. He heard a motor in the background or somebody else was doing their dishes. So, <laughs> uh, okay, photo uh, biomodulation. We're finding out that light can stimulate regeneration. Um, and this was an article just recently published in a major retinal journal. Uh, randomized sham controlled single center study photobiomodulation for the treatment of dry age related macular degeneration. So, even mainstream medicine is becoming 
interested in, and studies are coming out about regeneration using light. We have a laser in our practice called the 2RT. And this, uh, there was a study done in Australia that showed that application with this particular light decreased the progression of macular degeneration by 70%. And this is a case of extensive drusen on the left and on the right, decrease in drusen with light application. So this is regeneration. Uh, this is another article, subthreshold nanosecond laser intervention. Now this laser intervention I'm talking about is different than the laser that destroys tissue. This is a low level laser, much like the light therapy that you're using, which stimulates regeneration. So this isn't the destructive laser that eye doctors used to use years ago, where they would actually go in and destroy you know, blood vessels in areas that are leakage. This is lasers for regeneration. Uh, also, ozone therapy. You know, we need oxygen for regeneration. Now, not all of you are using ozone, uh, but I encourage you to investigate ozone because oxygen is essential for reju uh, rejuvenation. And ozone uh, increases the oxygen concentration in your body and helps to regenerate. And this was a presentation it was presented at the World uh, International Congress uh, on Ozone in France and a few years ago I had the pleasure of speaking at this conference talking about my experience in using ozone for uh, regeneration but this is noted throughout the world not just the United States uh, in Italy Spain Germany they're widely using ozone to help uh, patients with glaucoma retinitis pigmentosa macular degeneration now, of course, I published this in 2015, where I looked at um, uh, 295 eyes that were treated using uh, my parameters. And these, these are the categories that I looked at. Um, dry macular, glaucoma, wet, also macular hole, pucker, wrinkling, stargarts, cataract, ischemic optic nerve disease, retinitis pigmentosa, all these different categories. If you're interested, uh, you can go to my website and download the article and you can look at the specific results for each one of these individual eye diseases. But overall, uh, these are the results. The majority of, of patients had a significant improvement of vision. Uh, greater than 85% had a significant improvement of vision including some that had two lines, two, two, uh, one line or th uh, two lines of vision or more. And this is only after three days. But I want to, uh, I want to close by saying that, um, you know, you can do all these, these therapies. You can do microcurrent, light, ozone, detoxification, but it all comes down to, I believe, proper nutrition. Nutrition is the key. If you don't have a good healthy diet, you don't have the building blocks, your eye and vision is not going to regenerate. You also need proper hydration. Why is that? Well, uh, keeping your body properly hydrated is one way of eliminating toxins and uh, poisons in your body that may be slowing regeneration. Uh, you know, our body is 70 to 80% water. All cellular function needs water. If you're not properly hydrated, uh, that is going to limit your regeneration. Also, the importance of detox. If you have heavy metals, you've got to get rid of that lead and mercury. And I think that can be a, uh, a factor to prevent regeneration. Uh, also, you need to reduce stress. You know, you've heard over and over again, stress is a killer. Find a way to reduce stress. Uh, I love exercise. In fact, my wife and I this morning, we bicycled uh, for a couple of hours, you know, enjoying nature, getting out and, you know, exercise is wonderful. Meditation, uh, prayer, you know, positive affirmations, uh, all these things. You've got you to gotta reduce the stress. Now, this is something that that blew my mind. This uh, this came out. A low carb diet may reduce the risk of some types of uh, primary open angle glaucoma. And 
I think it's well accepted now that a low carb diet, but what I mean by a low carb diet, more fats and proteins than carb is better for your brain and eye, right? I'm sure all of you have heard that. But this study looked at the low carb diet, but they find that people that had a low carb vegetarian diet in a certain subtype of glaucoma had a uh, 20% reduction in progression of visual field loss which was unbelievable. So if you get your your fats from vegetables, that may be the key. So this is kind of exciting. I'm a big advocate of a vegetarian diet. Uh, my wife and I are vegetarian. And since I shifted over to a vegetarian diet, um, you know, my blood pressure is much better. I have better energy. I'm sleeping better at night. Uh, but, you know, occasionally... I mean, I'm not a strict vegetarian. Occasionally, I'll have a steak or some chicken, but I would say 95% to 99% of what I eat uh, is a vegetarian, vegetarian diet. So if you want more information, and maybe reread this book. Many of you had this book. It was my gift to you. You got to read the first chapter. The first chapter is all about diet and nutrition. Um, I think that is essential. Uh, and if you do have any questions on nutrition, you know, please uh, contact the office. So in conclusion, I believe that our bodies can regenerate. I see it all the time. I see miracles all the time. I see people with, you know, return of their eyesight, improvements of visual field, you know, regeneration of the eye. So I, there's no question in my mind regeneration can take place. And if you are not experienced regeneration, if you are not experienced a improvement of your vision, then there's some type of limiting factor. And, you know, we've got to find out that limiting factor. And that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm kind of like your coach. Um, uh, you, you know, you need somebody to kind of look, do an overview of what you're doing and, and find out what you're, what you're, you know, what maybe, what maybe you're missing. All right, so that's my um, uh, presentation.